Welcome. Short episode, as promised, give you the answers to the TOS Project 2020 player trivia. 20 names, but uh, what order do they come in? So I'll give you those and also tell you who my 20th pick was for the next 20 if TOPS decides to do another 20 baseball players next year or at some point in the future. Uh, first, thanks to sponsors. TOPS, obviously, uh, Panini, Upper Deck, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins Scott Auctions, ComC.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Rating, Beckett Education. Okay, trivia answers. Number one, the player who is no longer playing but never retired. That's obvious to anybody that's tracked me. First answer is Roberto Clemente. Unfortunately, he never, well, he was retired, but he, but he passed away. Number two, the subject born farthest away from the top offices. Again, th these are not intended to be Rich Klein level trivia questions. Rich can get all these mostly, I think, in his sleep, but uh, for uh, regular uh, fans. Ichiro. Ichiro Suzuki. Number three, top spokesperson, obviously Derek Jeter being featured prominently. Number four, Mariano Rivera. I think he was his, his 92 Bowman. He's not in uniform. He's just in kind of, well, not, not that flattering <laughs> street clothes. Number five, the young, youngest subject, obviously, and perhaps the one that's going to have the most copies printed out now they've announced the autograph thing is Mike Trout. Number six, the ambidextrous guy that could pitch with either hand, but was not famous as a pitcher. That's George Brett. I'm not sure Rich knows that, but I have a personal, I personally witnessed that. Number seven, Bob Gibson played basketball for the Harlem Globetrotters. Number eight was the no name on front. Try to be a little tricky. It was not Frank Thomas. It was Dwight Gooden. One of his art cards does not have his name or even his nickname anywhere on the front. And uh, you know, Dwight, you're wondering why is he in the set? Well, he was he was so scorching hot in '84 and '85, and I guess '86 or so. He was just perennial leader or near the top of our hot list in our magazine. So started off great and got got sidetracked. He does not need a ticket to get in the Hall of Fame because his stuff is already there. But uh, I don't think he's going to make the Hall of Fame, which is a real shame. Number nine was Ken Griffey Jr. The universally recognized rookie card is Upper Deck card. It's it's a shame that and it might even be copyright infringement for the artist to evoke in some subtle manner that iconic card, but uh, still worthy of being in the set. And he's got tops uh, rookies as well. Number ten was Tony Gwynn. Cal Ripken's got and 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 Ken Griffey Jr. Both have have uh, fathers that were in the that well actually Cal Ripken's father may not have played in the majors, and uh, Ken Griffey's brother didn't play in the majors. But anyway, Tony Gwynn, he had a brother, Chris, and a son, Tony Jr., who played in Major League Baseball. A nice family distinction. Number 11 was Ricky Henderson. Again, he just uh, amazing how he, and he, I think he was really reasonably productive. So played for nine teams, seemed like more. I think Octavio, Octavio Dotel has the record with 13 different franchises, but nine is a lot for, for, for a strong Hall of Fame player and, and a position player who played the most of anybody. Let's see. Number 12 was Sandy Koufax. Certainly the worst start of any Hall of Famer. Six years of, of just having not a good control, but a lot of stuff. And once he finally harnessed it, he was uh, absolutely amazing. Number 13 was Don Mattingly. Been in Major League Baseball since uh, 82 or 83, whole, really his whole life, and uh, some distinction as a manager, certainly distinction on the field and coaching, and but uh, not in the Hall of Fame. I believe he will possibly get there. Uh, number 14, Cyberger's favorite player, Willie Mays. I'll say more about that when I do my Cyberger episode uh, in the uh, future. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but I've got an episode picked out for that. Number 15 was Mark McGuire. Had a really cool art card that melded his uh, 85 tops Team USA jersey into the style of his 87 tops card. So I thought that was cool. And I think uh, maybe, I don't know if Ben appreciates it, but it's it's certainly a nod to to that uh, that situation. 16 was Cal Ripken. I thought surely he's got, he has the, the most seasons played within this group, even though there, the tops did honor the players who had had been but but Ripken even though he's he's played the most games with the Orioles he hasn't played the most seasons Brooks Robinson did I thought that was that was fascinating uh, of course Cal Ripken essentially never missed a game so he's going to be the game's leader in many ways and he, and he only played I think 22 years instead of the 23 that that Brooks did number 17 the special question for John Newman the Jackie Robinson, it's a 52 tops high number. And actually, that is a double print. It is a double print. The stitching on the baseball can go either way. That's not two different printings. That's actually two. There were 97 cards on the sheet, and 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 nobody talks about it, but the mantle is a double print as well. And, uh, and Bobby Thompson. So those are the three, three, 11, 12, and 13 are, are double prints. Still very, very tough. Like I said, kind of a double print, short print. Number 18 was Nolan Ryan. He's the all-time leader in walks. 
which is not actually it doesn't matter as much now in this age of uh, feast or famine baseball with uh, a lot of power and and a strikeout is actually better than a double play. So if somebody strikes out, they just go sit down, and every so often they hit a home run. But every so often, Nolan Ryan they were they were striking out. Number nineteen was Frank Thomas, and even though he's famous for his no name on front, uh, very scarce uh, rookie card, his Ben Baller card. I don't see his name anywhere on the front of the card. I see Big Hurt. I see Ben Baller. But again, you're, no one's going to be confused that it's that it's not Frank Thomas. But I thought it was curious that his name was not on only his nickname. So taking uh, liberties with uh, the the original card. And last but not least, uh, Ted Williams is the guy who had the most years removed from his actual rookie card, which is a 39 play ball. So he was under contract to Bowman in uh, most of those years. And if you know the story about 54 Bowman, apparently there at some point in 54, his card was pulled and he he, he, he went to Tops. So he was with Tops after mid-54, let's say. And finally, the last, my last, my 20th guy that would be the next that I would pick, he would wind, he would immediately go to the front of the line for the best athlete in the group, and he would go to the back of the line for the worst baseball player to be in an iconic baseball set celebrating the best baseball players. None other than MJ, Michael Jordan. Again, you'd have to get permission from Upper Deck, but I'm a, I'm a, a wishful thinker. Wouldn't that be cool to have uh, 20 artists doing renditions of Michael Jordan as a baseball player and kind of embellishing. And there's some, some, some say that if he'd have stuck with it, uh, he would have, he, he would, he's a great athlete, so wouldn't put it past him. But having 20 different baseball cards that were uh, interesting of Michael Jordan, I bet, the, I bet they'd sell. So again, thanks for this uh, diversion, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another regular episode.